However, yesterday something came out, something happened as the rescuers on the scene who are volunteers from the community members where, you know, had dropped the, you know, the, dropped the, the, the tools they used to rescue of, um, you know, illegal miners underground. You know, that rope came up onto the surface with a letter written by illegal miners allegedly under the ground. And of course, that letter, you know, was written in Isizulu saying that Sikela Ama medication, uh, in this case, they were referring to ARVs. However, you know, uh, that was communicated to law enforcement when, because when uh, that uh, media briefing happened in the afternoon, when my colleague was, Rafael Sibuga, you know, um, um, the government officials did respond to that. They, they did confirm that they received that communication and that request, and they will do the necessary processes to ensure that, you know, that request is acceded to, granted, or not granted. So we have not had a clear indication whether, you know, that, you know, a request will be, you know, granted. However, we know um, Aldri, that you know, there are some certain processes which must be followed in terms of issuing ARVs. But before we get to that, let's take a listen to this fight, you know, which refers to the medication request which was made yesterday by the illegal miners underground. The sending of the ARVs will recall that we have interim uh, court order that was issued on Saturday that uh, requested that we need to give the necessary medication that will ensure the safety of life. And if that uh, ARVs is one of the requests that is being done, we have indicated that it will be done in a very coordinated manner. They know where to go, where the team is convening, where they will give those ARVs that will go down uh, uh, underground uh, for the safety of or as the emergency uh, uh, rescue, you know, food and, and, and medical that was requested. I don't know how they can do this, to be honest. I, this one, it's very unlikely to be able to do it. I mean, first, to a person to be given this medicine, this medicine is a medicine that is very much for chronic disease, for someone who's got HIV or AIDS. So you cannot be giving this medicine without doctors, um, you know, having looked at the person and actually issued a prescription. So how can they actually say they would be giving, attending to this request from this illegal miner who's underground, who doesn't, who's evading arrest? Um, this one, it's human right. People have gone to court requesting this to happen, but how th this is not going to happen. It's very unlikely this would happen because it would breaking another health, health act of South Africa. The doctor needs to see this person, healthcare worker. Whoever is the, you know, the, um, the nurse who would be issuing under this program, this ARVs, they need to know who the person is. They can, can, these are not OTC over the counter medicine where people just go in and want, can you give me a Panadol? Yeah, no worries. Go and grab you a Panadol from the pharmacy. These are the, you know, registered medicine, specialized medicines. Um, so this request, even though they've gone to the court, the human rights people, it's very unlikely this request will be able to be issued because the person first has to reserve his, has to come back, come to and see and be, if really they're con his concern about not having a medicine, not receiving their medicine, they just need to um, request to, uh, to be assisted to, there's a, to actually get out of that hole and to get out of those illegal mines and see the doctor. I, it's very unlikely that this uh, request will be actioned, but it will be interesting to hear what the Minister of Health is going to say about this. Very interesting. Listen to this uh, and see what the Minister of Health is saying about this request, which is a bit crazy to me. But volunteer to rescue uh, these Zamazamas asking for chronic medication. Police say that they will have operations uh, that will assist those underground with medicine. Let's now bring in the Health Minister, Dr. Arun Mutsaledi, on this and whether it is a justifiable request. Minister, very good morning to it's you. Very, Thank you so much I'm for making time. Very confused. We understand that there was a this meeting can be uh, that was held last night between yourself as well as uh, the Minister of Police in relation to this request for ARVs as well as chronic medication. What can you tell us about that meeting and perhaps your interpretation of this request that has come from underground? 
Thank you very much, Aldrin. Thank you to the viewers and listeners. No, we didn't have a meeting with the Minister of Police. I was asking him because uh, you inquired uh, with my spokesperson what our attitude is towards this. And I was asking about the court judgment because we had received nothing as health. We had never received any note or any letter. Everything that we had, we had it from the media as you people were inquiring. So I was asking him, what is it all about? <clears throat> Whether there is any judgment that said the Department of Health must provide antiretrovirals, etc. I was asking Aldrin because the department in itself does not provide anybody with any medication. We develop policies and the uh, the issue of you getting medication is between you and your doctor. Firstly, a doctor must diagnose you and prescribe for you. Antiretrovirals are not panado. They are not over-the-counter medication. They go from one patient, I mean, from a, a, a doctor to a patient or a nurse to a patient, following particular policies and standards. But after an encounter with such a doctor, they are not just distributed like food or like water or like vitamins. So yes. that's exactly what I was discussing with yes. the minister. Yeah, and from, from that discussion, what, what's your final analysis around what is required? Uh, because during the press briefing that was held um, earlier this week, the deputy police commissioner had indicated that the ARVs will indeed be sent down. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how she's going to do that because who do you send ARVs to, uh, Elvis? As I'm saying, for you to get any medication, especially like ARVs. Question: Who is? How is she going to do it? That's just yeah, crazy. I don't know. She didn't have answered because she she's just said I you know. A police officer, she doesn't know these things. These are health things. It's another department. So all she should have said was like, we don't know about this request. We'll find out more information about it because it's not our area. Because he could never give a medication just with a piece of paper. Person just requesting an IRV with just a piece of paper, illegal minor underground evading arrest, have run out of ARV, now requesting it. And then you, under this human right group, they went to court and asked the government to, to allow this to happen. But this can't happen because a person must come up and be seen by the doctor. And when the person is seen by the doctor, that's another law of South Africa. And then the doctor will then issue that medication. <laughs> so this person is not even known who it, it is, that person. And... <laughs> This is like dumb. These groups, you know, this group, I just feel like this group, they're just wasting the resources of South Africa, this human rights group in South Africa. Because this is another judgment. It's like you go to court, you waste the court's time to try to argue this is human right, yada yada, we must uh, assist these people who are there under the ground, illegal minors who, who weren't sent there by anyone. They got there illegally. Their mind was closed, rehabilitated and closed. They opened it using this uh, uh, illegal uh, stuff they used to open that mine. And then they, the police found them. And then they start a lot of stuff, uh, requesting a lot of things and then requesting food, requesting water. I mean, the more requests you give to these people, the people are going to remain under, underground. They're not going to come up because they don't want to be arrested. There are others that came up and and good on them and then they were helped and then arrested and processed and then arrested. So this illegal miner is down there at the bottom wants um, the government to send them IIV with a piece of paper that they cannot have my IIV. And then... <clears throat> And then the minister was explaining to them that it just wouldn't be able to happen. Just doing that would be breaking South Africa's Health Act. The doctor must see the person. 
and must have done all the tests to to make sure that the therapy is still safe um still working well and then issued a prescription for these uh, medication if the person is under a program chronic disease management program there's different programs that they use in south africa but anyway that person would be up under that program if they've been identified so if the person for example has the medication been delivered at a certain clinic and the person hasn't collected those medicine because they are under the ground evading arrest therefore that person would then you know obviously it would go they would go to that clinic and collect those medicine because they were delivered there and the person's not there but even doing so they must see the person they can't just grab those medicines give it to anyone else because they cannot guarantee that those medicines are given to the person to the right person right medicine for the right person so this essentially is the same law is here in australia so you just cannot just give medicines like that without oh my god but you know these um human rights lawyer people they're just wasting the resource of south africa they just went there and then went to the court to try and get all this drama to continue i suppose the doctor ought to have examined you and prescribed them under whose name will the ARVs come out where will they come out from what will they be treating because we don't know the diagnosis of anybody so what the minister told me was that the 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 undertaking they gave is that they won't stop anybody uh, as police who goes down there to help somebody. If there's a doctor who is willing to go down there, examine somebody and give them whatever medication, they won't be stopped by police. But we can't just take medicines and, and say somebody has demanded ARVs, we are taking them there. What if we are causing harm to a particular person? And, and so that's what I was phoning the minister, so I was asking him what what this is all about, how is it going to be done, and, and under what laws. And, and that's when he reported to me that, look, as far as he understands the order, the court just said police should not bar anybody from emergency help of those people. And he said that's what they are doing. Community members are going down there to do whatever they are doing. If they happen to be going down with a doctor who is going to administer medication, then the police won't stop such a doctor. Yeah. Does this apply to any other chronic medication as well, Minister? So who is that doctor who would be willing to risk their lives and go to a mine shaft that had actually been deemed as unsafe with a lot of fumes, you know, mercury, um, you know, mercury is very toxic for your lungs, you know, and cyanide, all of those stuff these illegal miners use. So to in order to get gain access actually to these mines, and who was, was going to risk their life for that? I wonder. It'd be interesting to know. Yes. Any chronic medication that is for prescription, because Aldrin, let's, let's get this clear. Medication is only given after a diagnosis. A diagnosis is given after examination by a doctor. Medication is not just given at random. As I'm saying, it's not like you are giving water, like you are giving food, or maybe like you are giving medicines. You are, you are treating a particular illness. And, and so you have got to know exactly what is that which you are treating and for what. If, at, on the other hand, one of the minors uh, was already diagnosed and they've got their own doctor and they are ordering that please allow my doctor to come and give me medication. And, and that's what minister was saying, that they won't stop such a doctor. But just to go to the Department of Health and say I'm demanding uh, uh, antiretrovirus, mm -hmm. it's a tall order for us because where do we start? Yeah. So, so, so does that mean that, let's say the example that you make now of... Um, I think we'll stop here. This is crazy. The craziness of craziness is this saga of illegal miners. Really. So now that you've listened to that video, and I hope this one gives you some side about the differences in the laws in South Africa and Australia, and also just to the, the whole uh, saga about this illegal mining 
the ethics and the response of all interested party. So the uh, human rights people went to court requesting intervention and that intervention is to allow access. Of course, they, they have allowed access, but who's going to risk their lives to go underneath there in the mine that's been declared as unsafe? So the South African government has a right to protect their staff. The South African health, um, you know, workplace has a work and safety laws that uh, doesn't allow anyone else to just be drawn into a workplace where the environment is not safe for them. So it'd be very interesting to see how this um, request is going to be enacted as alluded in this video that that request for AIV who is the doctor is going to go underneath and assess this person and then deem that person to require to needing those uh, IIV um, and then do those tests and that are required to, to assess the CD4 count and all of that so it is a very saga that is um, getting nowhere is the judgment that they, these human rights we're able to get, they're not going to solve this problem. I don't see how they're going to solve this problem because the problem is the illegal miners that understood that they didn't have food, they didn't have any much resources, and they got out. They are out. And you know, of course, they've been processed, and um, some of them are waiting to see a court because it's illegal. But these ones, they are they don't want to come out. They're using all the tricks available not to cut to evade this arrest. Um, I don't know what is the end goal for this human rights group in South Africa because I mean, this judgment is useless in my view. It's useless because the mind is deemed unsafe. So for a, a doctor must waver, for anyone to enter those mind, a volunteer who are helping, they waver, they sign the waiver form to say anything happens to them, they cannot sue the government, they cannot sue anyone that, you know, they've injured themselves while trying to rescue these people. So essentially it's to volunteer and you must sign a waiver. So the doctor who want to assess this person will then need to sign a waiver form. If they this, they waver their life and say, yeah, if I die there, if I get, you know, the disease, lung disease later in life because I'm exposed to these toxics, asbestos under the ground, it's okay. My life is not worth it. I don't have right to life. Essentially what they said, the judgment is everyone has the right to life. Yes, everyone has the right to life. So to the healthcare workers, so to the emergency personnel, so to, you know, there's a responsibility of any employee to um, any employer and employee to make sure that their workers are safe. Uh, so this is essentially this judgment useless, the waste of court of South Africa's time and resources to even hear it. That's what I'm saying right now. It's actually it's the waste of resources, South Africans' resources. That's my view of it. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a lovely day. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Till next time, see you again.